Welcome to day four in our series, Learn Screenwriting from Sicario. I'm Corel Seegers. I sold my first produced script in high school, and this month I'm honing my style with the help from Della Sheridan and uh, using practice from Stephen King, Joan Didion, and Shakespeare. The technique is part of the immersion method, and at the end of this video, I'll give you a discount code that will cut the price in half for you. The secret to developing a great writing style is to copy and transcribe the best scripts and movies. I'm copying the screenplay of Sicario word for word, and you can follow here as I learn. The reason this one shows up red is because the document is set for British English, I think. So a lot of military references here and um, Sheridan has said that he's drawn from the experience and the help of a lot of his friends uh, who are army men. Now this is important where he says the most likely spot for an attempt will be at the exchange and the border. That's anticipation that anchors the audience's focus on what's coming and they'll be looking out for that and you, uh, see how that's going to be repeated and how um, we essentially we're on this collision course with whatever is going to happen um, so so far he says um, uh, the exchange and the border are the two possible places where something will happen these look like the characters from Sheridan's other uh, films could be coming straight out of Yellowstone or Hell or High Water. That's a smirk. Sheridan himself is a Texan. Second time this is mentioned, or at least now it's specified that things may go wrong on the turnaround, on the way back. Operators. I would have expected operatives, but I'm not the expert. So now, this is the third time it's mentioned. Border crossing on the return. For first, it was mentioned the exchange or the border. Then he says on the turnaround, and now he says the most likely spot for a hit is at the border crossing on the return. So if we've missed everything else he said, and it is, has been quite a lot, this has been repeated a number of times. So by now, we should have this um, anchored in our minds. Here, it has a question mark in the film. It's more a confirmation. It's more a statement. Look, uh, Sheridan uses these double dashes here in dialogue, and I really like that. It emphasizes the moment. It's elegant because it goes in the reading direction. Now, this is interruption, so we're going to do double dash without a space. This is the end of Act 1 scene where her commitment is challenged and she needs to uh, fully confirm her commitment to the case, to the mission. And in this context, Matt is her mentor character who gets her there. And that's a confirmation. End of Act 1. And now I'm interested, I seem to remember that in the film there is a verbal interaction and I want to check that immediately. Okay, you volunteered to get on this train because you, you know you're doing nothing in Phoenix. Okay, you're just sweeping up a fucking mess. In six months, every single house you raid will be rigged with explosives. Do you want to find the guys responsible, yes or no? Yes. Yes? Yes! This is where we start. Right on. That's a big difference. That's a clear yes. And that is the hero's commitment to the second act goal. See, it's so useful to really compare the original screenplay and the film. 
And this is my favorite sequence. One of the most visually stunning and important threshold sequences um, I've seen in a long time. Threshold being the uh, travel from act one into act two, from the uh, ordinary world into the special world. This is also the part of the film where Denis Villeneuve, I think, takes uh, the greatest credit for the story and the impact on me, uh, for sure. Fantastic cinematography, a uh, wonderful score, and he had briefed, I think, Johan Johansson, the composer, uh, that he didn't want music, he wanted sounds, and one of the references was Jaws. If you listen to these, uh, uh, almost continuously minimalistic bass drones rolling through that sequence. It has something of Jaws and it is incredibly effective. I just adore that sequence. It's one of the few spots in the screenplay where um, description is deceptive in the sense that the finished film takes more time than the page count would suggest. If the uh, uh, travel here represents maybe a page, then in the film it's actually a few minutes. But on that note, Sheridan did it the right way. He didn't waste time on descriptions of landscape. He stuck to action. Everything on the page is a dramatic beat. Um, it is up to the director to enhance that or add to it. That is a directorial decision. If you see beautiful landscapes in your mind, please do not describe them on the page. It's not your business. Um, from my own experience, I can tell you those scripts are sheer unreadable. And they're, unfortunately, they're numerous. Here's a script note. Through the remainder of scene we will intercut in and out of the vehicle. So that's a way of not wasting precious page real estate, um, and, but getting the suggestion across. And then it's up to the director how that is being um, executed. Uh, so he's not describing it as such on the page, which would have been uh, cluttered. Uh, I know that the scripts that we look at from uh, Christopher Nolan, they literally write the intercut intercutting and it makes the page uh, uh, totally unappealing, in my view. I wonder this loud enough, she actually wonders if others hear it too, whether Sheridan would have left that in if he'd rewrite the script today. And this is the end of the first half of the threshold journey. Uh, it's interesting because in many great films we have double threshold. I've said this before. In Star Wars A New Hope we have Luke first travel uh, to Mos Eisley and then from Mos Eisley into deep space. In um, Raiders of the Lost Ark we have uh, Indigo from the um, university to Nepal to pick up Marion and then from Nepal to uh, Egypt here. First we go to the uh, place in Juarez where they pick up their uh, target and then they travel back. Together that uh, makes up a, a significant threshold that shows we're entering a new world but at the same time it's also travel going from A to B and it, it introduces our hero um, Kate here to a whole new world. And so contrary to what was said before, that something might happen either at the exchange or at the border, now Alejandro um, removes the idea that anything will happen here. Nothing will happen here if they try anything. It will be at the border. So that's the fourth time this is uh, clarified. This is where the second part of the threshold starts. And now we're completely prepared for something to happen. 
At the end, I'll give you a list of all my points, but as we continue, see which choices you agree with and which you don't. That's how you develop your style. Now, back to work. Interesting jargon again, the spotter vehicle and the strike vehicle. Things getting hairy now. She unholsters her pistol. Chekhov's gun, when we see it, it's gonna be used. In the film, it's a red Impala. Only a few more cars and the convoy is clear, but that would mean luck is on their side and luck doesn't live on this side of the border. Wonderful subjective description. This is from the POV of Kate. Yeah, we're gonna end it, this is perfect. We're on page 40. So yeah, we did a lot of work today. Um, ended the threshold sequence, one of the most amazing sequences I've seen in recent years and certainly one of the prime assets in this screenplay. I showed you how in the film Kate is challenged by Matt to verbally and expressly commit to the mission. Yes! Yes! It strengthens her character in terms of focus and determination. The scene also reminds us of similar mentor moments at the exact same point in other movies, like the first Avatar. Do you do that for me, son? Hell yeah, sir. And The Untouchables. No turning back, you understand? Yes, I do. Denis Villeneuve's version of The Threshold has a minute-long sequence with desert, helicopters and drone footage of the Chevys before they reach the Bridge of the Americas near the border. Do you remember how Taylor Sheridan described all that in the script? Exactly. Nothing. One moment we're in El Paso's traffic, the next we're crossing into Juarez. I hope that some of you will draw a lesson from this because I cannot tell you how many scripts I've seen that have completely undramatic descriptions of landscapes, sunsets, flower gardens, dust floating in shards of light in the hallway, etc. All that stuff, it's for the director and the cinematographer, not your business. The most descriptive line from the Juarez threshold is this. She looks out the window to Juarez. It's so close, you could throw a frisbee into it. And that's a big part of Sheridan's so-called genius. He doesn't bore the reader. Speaking of boredom, perhaps the contrary is anticipation. It is striking how many times the line is repeated about the danger of an attack on the return from Juarez. If you've seen the film, you'll know that the repetition is still there and it is super effective. What it does, it focuses the audience's mind while building anticipation. Hitchcock explained this ages ago. Soon after this mentor moment, the Chevys hit the road for the threshold sequence. By the way, Chevys, this is how you spell it, Taylor. The threshold is a notion from the hero's journey terminology. And frankly, I don't know any film from the last 20 years that delivers such a powerful threshold. The travel from El Paso to Juarez in the Chevys is a piece of cinema that will survive most films at the box office today. The sequence introduces the second act. It also leads the hero character into a figurative new world. Now, about that sequence. For the border highway scene, Sheridan includes a script note saying, through the remainder of the scene, we will intercut in and out of the vehicles. The alternative would have been to 
have different slug lines each time using int dot and ext dot. And while this may be preferred for a shooting script, it looks horribly cluttered. Instead, Sheridan gives us a better reading experience than many other writers. And I've mentioned Christopher Nolan as a bad example. I find some sequences in The Dark Knight or Inception borderline unreadable. Sicario has a lot of military jargon. Most of it doesn't need any explanation. It's self-evident or not essential to understanding the plot. Later, we'll see how Sheridan deals with jargon that we do need to understand. In any case, the use of jargon gives the film a flavor of believability and verisimilitude. We believe that this is how things are done in the real world because the characters sound like experts. But instead of criticizing other writers, I want to end on a humble note. Rereading my own copying work, I'm terrified by the amount of typos I left in. You've all noticed while I was typing, I was building a nice collection of red squiggly lines there. You know what's interesting? I notice even the slightest typo in other people's work, and people pay me good money as a proofreader, but when it comes to my own work, I clearly have a long way to go. So what did you learn that I didn't pick up? Tell us in the comments. I've compiled my seven insights from today and you can download the checklist from the link below. After these past four days, are you starting to see the power of this method? Can you think of one better way of learning formatting, POV, theme, style, etc.? Well, if you want to play, you'll have to master all these things and the immersion method looks after that. So join Immersion Script today and I'll give you 50% off. All you need is in the notes below. And um, if you have any questions, contact me via the story department. Contact link is also below or just comment to this video. Voila. If you've enjoyed this, support me by subscribing and clicking the bell so you know when there's more. Happy watching. Happy writing. Cheers.